I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh** I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Okay, I'm Johnny Hazel and I'm going to walk you through the Johnny Hazel variant of the Boris Shaco beginner program. So first thing you need to do is enter your one rep max, it's here. For all of these lifts, okay, and be conservative with this. You know, don't, don't choose a weight that you did a few weeks ago or a few months ago and, you know, you feel like you could still do that. This, this isn't a guessing game here, it's, it's got to be accurate. Um, otherwise the program becomes completely null and void. You end up getting halfway through the program really realizing the maxes were not correct they were too heavy most of the time people get it too heavy and then you have to start deloading the weight taking weight off inflating deflating and it's it's a big mess it's just not if you can avoid that why would you why why would you do it just avoid it so uh, if you're not competing you i i give you two options here first option is you can just run the prep cycle the sheet right here as many times as you need and then test your new maxes and restart and go again. A lot of people ask me how many times. I normally say you could probably run it maybe three times um, and then you start to plateau. Um, depends on the individual lifter, of course, and their experience. Or alternatively, you can run the prep in the competition um, cycles, periods, and, um, and then instead of uh, training for the competition on those days, you instead go and hit some new PRs in the gym on day seven on the final week instead of doing a competition on five, six, and seven. So that's what you can do, uh, inflating and deloading. Again, you can adjust the weights if you feel at any given point it's too light or too heavy based on the fact that the maxes were not correct. Normally, as a rule of thumb, it's, it's, it's normally 10 to 15%. Um, but again, be careful because this program, you know, some, some phases of this program, some weeks, some sessions are actually designed to be more intense, less intense, more volume focused, more intensity focused. So don't be too quick to make that decision. Just uh, assess the program and, and just try and understand what, what sort of training session, what's the objective of this training session. Okay, good mornings. I've taken good mornings out. Again, I'll go in a foot. If you want to know the full reason in full detail, detail why, there's the Excel spreadsheet document, uh, or I might just put it in this spreadsheet later, it, outlining why I've changed the good mornings to the reverse hypers, the Roman chair 45 degree hyper extension, and the Romanian deadlifts. To cut a very long story short, the risk reward ratio doesn't add up with the good mornings. It is a very efficient exercise. The research, the data shows it gets the job done, but the risks is incredibly high. And my reasoning and rationale for throwing this exercise out the window and not doing it is simply because there are other exercises that offer the exact same benefits, strength gains, muscular hypertrophy, improved uh, mobility, hip mobility, uh, with less risk, and also they're much easier to perform. So you, you'll, you'll have more consistency week in, week out, and those are the three that I've chosen. Makes sense, right? Um, deadlift wise, I've cleared this up a bit. The original program was a little bit messy, didn't really fully clarify exactly what, what they wanted you to do. Deadlift from the boxes has been changed to rack pull. We'll talk about how to set that up in terms of the height later. Uh, deadlift to knees has been changed to the three inch deficit deadlift or a snatch grip def deficit deadlift. Um, this is just to make sure that people know what they're doing. Um, someone once did a box deadlift, and that was, I think it was a bench deadlift. I think it was a box deadlift. They actually deadlifted off uh, a box, a sort of pilometric box. Um, and I was like, that that's not what it was meant to be done, although that is a really cool idea. So that's why I've just clarified that. Next up, accessory exercises. Again, if you want to know more research about this, the reason why I've chosen these exercises, I'll put that in the Excel spreadsheet. Alternatively, it might be on the final, uh, a new sheet on this, this Excel document outlining that. But I've basically gone with the science, the research, which shows is the most effective exercises, uh, contracting the muscle groups that you're trying to target with that said exercise. This is the best way to go about it. You know, when you're doing these sort of strength-based training, tr training programs, you really want to optimize those hypotrophy assistance accessory exercises to get the most out of them from not just a hypotrophy standpoint but also from a strength st strength standpoint you don't want to waste any time or any energy in a strength training program because they are very demanding and there is very marginal room for error in strength training programs so everything has to be incredibly efficient effective and you must keep on schedule and keep to the program 
Um, one of the main reasons I see most people fail in, in powerlifting and especially when they're making their own programs or following a program is that they start thinking that they're the next Albert Einstein of powerlifting and that they can redefine the laws of gravity and make a whole new program and that they're smarter and better than everyone else who ever wrote the program and they're the most intelligent people in the world. And then they end up going completely off script comes an absolute disaster they either burn out and incur chronic central nervous system fatigue become injured whether that's severe or minor injury become demotivated uh, anxious anxiety uh, having anxiety tiredness fatigue and and it's just a disaster the whole program just ends prematurely what a waste of time if you ask me so keep to it uh, and i that that's my analogy when i design these programs so that's me waffling a bit there so in this program, I do use the RPE scale. Again, if you're not familiar with what that is, I will put that in the Excel spreadsheet uh, sheet that I might design, including all the information. It will be the last one here. Alternatively, it will be in the Microsoft Excel document. Now, the RPE rates from a scale of 1 to 10, and that's the rate of perceived exertion. It can also be considered reps in reserve, um, just to keep it simple. And as you can see, the scales there, I mean, we don't need to just... I don't need to say no exactly what it says it's right there um, so yeah I mean we go up in 0.5 with my one uh, you see some RP scales that go up uh, you know they start actually about six and they go six seven eight nine ten ten being your absolute maximum meaning you can't do any more reps one to four being pretty much irrelevant we we, we certainly don't do any sort of RP ratings from one to four in powerlifting normally you start about six that's your warm-up weights, and then seven is three reps, definitely in reserve. Uh, seven point five, definitely two, maybe three. And as you can see, that's the trend. So we do use this scale. This is a good scale when you're not using percentages of one rep max. In addition, the best thing about the RP, which is why I like it, especially if it's for like an accessory exercise or an assistance exercise, which isn't detrimental to the success of the program, albeit still very important. It gives you some wiggle room and flexibility. If you're feeling quite fatty, quite tired that session. It, it's not 75% of your one rep max, it's it's either maybe a 7 or a 6.5 and that's based on how much energy, how you're feeling that day. You know, you're not going to turn up to every training session at 100% are you? So this kind of, this means that what the weight you lift is um, pertaining to your energy levels that day, whether you're carrying any minor injuries, feeling off, the workout's not going to plan. It takes all of that into consideration and the weight just automatically ad adjusts itself based on lifting weights with how many reps you believe is left in the tank after finishing that five, six, seven, whatever, eight reps. So that's why we're using that. I'm gonna stop now uh, and I'm gonna move on to the program. So let's have a look at the prep period. This is the first phase. It lasts for four weeks and there's three training sessions per week. You can do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split. Uh, the rest are all days off. Or you could do maybe a Tuesday, Thursday um, and, and Saturday split and take uh, Sunday and Monday off. Um, but, but follow that structure. That's what I would advise. So week one, week one is pretty straightforward. Let's let's just outline a few things first. You will see with this program when you're doing the main core lifts, they're the ones that are in bold. You will have about three warm up sets, which will normally be 50, 60, 70, uh, 50, 60 percent. Sometimes you'll see it like here, 50, 60, 70 percent. In the first one week here, you can see with the squat, we've got 50, 60 percent. I consider these warm up rep, warm up sets, but they're still important so don't skip them you need that to work up to the top set which in this case would be 70 percent for four sets of four week one in this situation you can see that the intensity isn't as high as some of the latter weeks but we'll talk more about that later and again with the bench press we got um, a warm-up 50 60 percent uh 70 percent uh, for one set of three and then the top set is four sets of three at 75 percent now people ask me what's the sort of rest intervals between working sets for, for all the sets well i'd say between the first two to three warm-up sets you might want to take maybe about uh two minutes rest between sets not too much but then between heavier working sets um like say for example this one the bench press 75 percent for four sets three you know anywhere from maybe two to, to five minutes i mean five minutes would be an extreme um but normally two to three minutes on average is, is a good rest interval when you're doing this type of training 
Now you have two sort of accessory exercises, assistance exercises. These are not optional, they're compulsory. The first one is the pec deck flies, RPE 7.5. Now the RPE sheet you will find here, as I said before, in this instance that's three reps in reserve. You can do definitely do three reps it's for four sets of eight. And the Roman chair, 45 degree hyperextensions. Now this is replacing good mornings. I have talked about that and you can find that in, in the document, the Word document explaining why I've taken out good mornings and replaced them with other exercises. This is the exercise. Four sets of five, RP of eight. An RP of eight is a weight that you can definitely do with two reps left in reserve easily. Okay, and um, how do you work that out? Well, firstly, these are the working sets, four sets of five. You're gonna want to do a couple of warm-up sets first, one to two warm-up sets. And that will give you an indication of what that RP of eight should be when you're doing that. So that outlines that. Day two day three actually training the second training session we're going to start off with a three inch deficit deadlift or alternatively if you're not a fan of that you can try the snatch grip deadlift just make sure you've got that snatch grip that wide grip and in the tutorial video sheet you will find the tutorial on how to do the snatch grip deadlift properly and again you'll see this sort of 60 50 60 percent warm-up sets and then 70 percent and then you've got 75 percent uh, for four sets of two and then we've got the incline barbell bench press um, in terms of the incline what should the incline be set at eh, I, I kind of like quite a low incline 15 15 degrees um, but anyway from 15 to 45 really up to you five sets of three 85 percent uh, then we've got the seated v-grip cable pulley row uh, five sets of eight rp of seven and then we're going to do some rack pulls the rack pull, the setup for the rack pull is outlined quite clearly here. This applies for every time you do a rack pull throughout this program. Just set it up so that the barbell meets your knees about three to four inches below your kneecap. Make sure it's below the knee and not above for this program. Um, that's very important. That's what, how you want to set that up. Then you can do some vertical leg raises. If you can't do vertical leg raises, you'll see that in the tutorial video, then you can do um, like chair leg raises or you could do lying leg raises as long as you can do three sets of ten not to failure have about two 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 reps left in reserve choose whatever you want if you can do three sets of ten easily and rp7 then just you do vertical leg raises weighted final session is a friday we've got the squat and the bench press again we've got the rep scheme three warm-up sets and then we've got the working set 75 four sets of three and then the bench press got a couple of warm-up sets to just get you ready for the top top sets which is four sets of two at 80 percent you're going to do three accessory exercises um back to back here barbell floor press fantastic exercise again i'll put a tutorial video on how to do that tricep cable press down you can use the v-grip or the straight bar for this depending on which one you'd like to use and then we've got the the rdl the romanian deadlifts with the barbell RPEs are all clearly stated right there. Try to keep to those RPEs. Seven to eight is normally a good range. So this week, this the first week is, is quite introductory. The intensity isn't too high. You can see by the percentages, 75%, uh, 85% uh, 85 for the incline, but that's, that's an assistance exercise, 75%, 75, 80. So we're working on that 75 to 80%. Week two. We're going to do squats, bench press. We do that every Monday for uh, for the four weeks. You can see squat, bench. Uh, we've got 50, 60, 70%, and then the working set, 80%. Same with the bench press. We've got 40, 50, 60, 70, and then we do the top sets, five sets, three at 80. Three back-to-back -back accessory exercises, wide grip lat pull-downs, four sets of eight. Chest dips. Now, make sure you're doing the chest dips and not the tricep dips. You can use a, uh, a dip and shrug machine, or you can do, um, you know, suspended dips with with, with the, the usual setup that you normally see. Uh, just make sure you choose a weight you can do for four sets of eight. And be sensible with this. Don't go too deep with the chest dips. You don't want to tear, rip or anything. Just be sensible with those. Make sure you've got the right, you set the right setup so you're doing it for the chest and not the triceps. And then you're going to do the, the 45 degree hyperextensions again, which we did last week. 
So how do I choose the accessory exercises for this program? Well, I've done them based on research out there, scientific research, outlining which exercises are optimal, the best ones for said muscle group. I've chosen that based on that theory, not based on personal preferences or what the average gym bro likes or what some trainer on Instagram recommends. It's based on science, on EMG tests. Uh, I've got more information on that on the Excel document if you want to look into that in, in more depth than what I've just outlined. So uh, day three, three inch deficit deadlift snatch grip, depending on what one you want to do. Doing 70, 75% for four sets of two. That would be the top set. Top sets, plural. Uh, bench press. We're going to do four sets of six for the top set here. Um, and then we're going to do the rack pull deadlift again. Same setup as the week before. Cable crossover flies. Love this exercise. It's ranked as probably, I think, the best, if not one of the best. So I would highly recommend doing the cable crossovers. As I said, it's um, one of the best, if not the best pec chest exercise out there especially for hypertrophy but um it's a good exercise again with these these accessory exercises i try to mix it up a bit i haven't just chosen one exercise for each muscle group and then you just do that consistently throughout the the eight week period i like to try and keep keep it keep it keep the muscles guessing introduce some different exercises that target different sec sections of the chest i think that's the better way to do it Standing barbell overhead press, a fantastic exercise for the front deltoids, but generally for all the deltoids, the shoulder muscles, um, four sets of eight, RP of eight. Then on Friday, we got the squat, and now we're doing a close grip bench press. A close grip bench press is a great exercise to include into your training routines. Again, if you don't know how to do it, I'll put a tutorial video in there, and you can look up how to do it properly. Um, there are things that people commonly get wrong when doing the close grip bench press. Uh, so it's important to know how to do it. It's a fantastic exercise for the tricep. It is the best compound tricep exercise out there. That is proven by the science, the research, the best. Fantastic exercise when done properly. That's the most important thing. There. One arm dumbbell rows. Love that exercise. Uh, great for the lats, for the back. Chest dips and Romanian barbell deadlift again. Four sets of eight there. RP is clearly outlined. So this week, again, not too much intensity here um we the bench press we're doing 80 percent on monday five sets of three and then we're doing uh 75 six, uh, 65 to 75 on wednesday with the exercises and on friday 70 percent and 70 percent for our top working sets so intensity is still quite low if you're feeling like oh this is all very easy you know uh, the the thing that makes this program more difficult is actually the frequency of you doing these core lifts um you're squatting twice a week and you're bench pressing three times a week and you're doing deadlift once a week but on that deadlift day which makes this program really cool is you're actually doing two deadlift variations doing more of a snatch deficit which works on the sort of lower range of motion of the lift from the floor to the knees and then you're doing more that rack pull deadlift which is from knee level mid range to lockout so i like this style of training which is why i th think this is a good beginner program as well because this is a much better way to approach deadlifting, I personally believe, um, than, than doing just your standard deadlift um, off the floor once or twice a week. So there we go, that's that. Uh, week three, try and move a bit quicker, sorry about this. Week three, here we go. So squat and bench again, we're looking at the top set, 75%, 80%, five sets of two, and you've got these, what I consider to be more warm up sets singles of five four and three and then you can do some pec deck flies dumbbell bench press again dumbbell bench press is a great chest exercise for strength and hypertrophy you can really extend the range of motion which is limited when you're doing the barbell again try and choose some sensible lightweight don't try and max this out which is why i've outlined quite clear an rpe of seven so each set you've got at least three rep let reps in reserve then reverse hyper extensions this time if you don't have a machine for a reverse hypers, then you can do the 45 degree hyper extension. I'm going to do one inch deficit de deficit deadlifts in this case. 65% for four sets of two. Bench press. Bench press is getting quite heavy now, as you can see right here. 80% to 85% for sets of three and sets of two. You can do some rack pulls. The rack pulls aren't always slightly heavier. You can see here 80 and 90%. 
Why? Because you're not doing it off the floor. You're focusing on that mid-range to lockout. You can definitely add more weight and do more intensity when you're doing this type of training. Common issue I see with most people is they don't put a limit on it and they start doing like 100% of their one rep max, 105, 110, so they're going way over what's required. These, this is a good percentage, 80 to 90% for sets of two and three. Friday squat, and this time incline barbell press, instead of previous week we did close, press, close grip. The bench press, uh, we're working with 80% four sets of two as the top set, and we got the 50, 60, 70 leading up to that five, four, and three, re, re, uh, sets of five, four, and three. Incline, keeping it relatively sensible there, 70% four sets of four. Then we're finished with the barbell and the neutral grip dumbbell press. Again, a fantastic tricep exercise. If you don't know how to do it, I'll put it in the tutorial video and you can watch and learn from there. Final week is week four. Week four, you squat bench on day one. The percentages are going up. The intensity is increasing. 85% for three sets of two. Set before that, two sets of two at 80%. That's with the squat. The bench press, we're doing five sets of three at 80%. Um, so heavy triples, um, quite heavy triples. And then we've got our three warm-up sets, 50, 60, 70% for five, four, and three. Close grip lat pull downs. Again, keeping it different. Before we've done wide, now we do close. Dumbbell concentrated curls and 45 degree hyper extensions. All the percentages, all the uh, rep sets are there and the RP is there. Try to keep to the RP. A lot of people, when I do this program, is they don't. Instead, they completely ignore it and go to failure, go to their max for each working set. Well, you know, that's not a good idea. Considering the amount of frequency you're doing for the bench, and the squat and then you've got the intensity for the deadlift on Wednesdays do you really want to be using more energy of your max strength on accessory exercises I don't think that's a good idea that's why I've outlined in it normally an RPE from six to eight being eights being the max six being the minimum okay Wednesday bench press one inch deficit deadlift the bench we're doing 80 to 85 percent for sets of two and three deficit one inch deficit 75% for three sets of one, and the set before that, you get 70, 75, two sets of two, three sets of one. It's quite low reps because you're doing a deficit, and deficit is harder, obviously, than off the floor. It's kind of obvious. Um, and then you can do three accessory exercises, chest dips, dumbbell seated shoulder press instead of the standing barbell, which we've done before, weighted crunches. And then we got the squat, the bench press, on the Friday, and we're gonna do some straight bar press downs, four sets of eight, and some RDLs again, four sets of five. Great exercise. The RDL again, it's a great way to replace, great exercise to replace the good mornings with. Again, I'm not gonna go into detail in this video why I've replaced them. You can read that, but this is a fantastic exercise. Firstly, you get the exact same benefits as a good morning, without all the risk. In addition to that it's easier to execute you're less likely to make mistakes and for beginners it's easier to learn um, so it doesn't throw you in the deep end like with the good morning um, I think if you took like 10 people and asked them to do three sets of five of good morning I reckon only 70% I reckon 70% of them would probably be doing it with improper form to varying degrees of completely wrong to getting a few cues incorrect, I think maybe only 30% of them would be able to execute each set and each rep with proper form, proper technique, and within their range of capabilities. The rest would probably have great inconsistencies with performing each set and each rep. So I, I really don't think it's, it's not what it's cracked up to be, to be honest with you. There are better exercises that are potentially superior to the good morning. So anyway, that's a bit of a rant there. So that's it, that's the prep period, four weeks. Let's move on to the comp period. Okay, let's start the comp phase. Uh, this is a four week phase. Um, we are training still three sessions per week. Week one is going to be a quite high intensity week. Day one is pretty straightforward. The top head, is, head set for the squat is three sets, two at 75. Three sets of two, 75 for the bench and some weighted crunches. The weighted crunches, you can use anything as weight. Weight plates, kettlebells, dumbbells, medicine balls, you know, as long as it's weighted. And then on Wednesday, this is where shit gets heavy. Sorry for the language. Uh, squat, we're going to work up to 105%, so that's 5% above our current one rep max. 
again, do all the percentages, all the working sets leading up to that. Don't skip the first three and go 80, 90, 95, 100. You need to work up to that top heavy set. If you skip the first three, there's a high likelihood that you won't be able to achieve that top heavy set. And then we've got the bench, exact same thing. And then we've got the deadlift, exact same thing. And then we're gonna finish with some reverse hypers. If you don't have access to a reverse hyper machine, use the 45 degree extension. Friday is squat and bench again, but very low intensity. 75% four sets of two is the top heavy set in this instance. And then for the bench, 75% for five sets of three. Five sets of three is quite a common rep scheme used throughout this program. This program focuses on low rep sets. Um, five sets of three has been around for a very long time. It is a highly successful rep scheme, especially when it's at 75%. You get 15 working sets, that's perfect. 15 working reps, which is perfect. Um, and, and it's quite commonly used there. I use five sets of three a lot. Um, I like doing triples, sets of three. Okay, and then we got the pec deck, dumbbell shoulder press, and vertical leg raises. If you can't do vertical leg raises, you can do it off with the, uh, the sort of the chair leg raises or lying leg raises. Week two, uh, we are doing on the squat bench day one. Four sets of two is the top heavy set, 80% intensity slightly higher this week on Monday, and then 80% for five sets of three for the bench. And then you've got your three exercises. Now this one, 15 degree, the bench should be set up to about 15 degrees. Um, and you can do a dumbbell press or you could do the dumbbell fly variation. And then you've got close grip bench press and the RDLs. And then on Wednesday, we've got a two inch deficit deadlift. One to two inches should be sufficient for this one. I wouldn't go for any higher um, than that for this day. Top heavy set in this instance is three sets of one. So it's not too demanding at 70%, even though it is a deficit. The bench press we're working up to at 90% for two sets of one. But you start at 50, 60, 70, 80, and then we go up 5%, 85, and then 90. Then the rack pull, same position as it has been throughout the whole program when we do rack pulls. Top heavy set this time is three sets of one at 95%. We start at a slightly higher percentage, 65% of our one rep max for the deadlift because it's a rack pull and it's not off the floor. You have that option to skip from 50%. And 60 you can start at 65 but don't suddenly apply that rule of thumb to everything that only applies with the rack pull deadlift and then friday we squat we bench 80 percent four sets of three again sets of three are very popular in this program and then the bench five sets of three uh, at 80 percent again so 80 percent of our one rep max for friday um, we got 80 we got slightly heavier for the bench and the rack pull on wednesday and 80 percent on monday this week is quite taxing, but week one is the most taxing due to the fact that we are chasing that 105% for the three big lifts. Um, now, here's a bit of advice. So if you really feel fatigued after that Wednesday session, don't go into the Friday set, take the one day rest and then jump into Friday. Maybe take a 72 hour period of rest to really make sure you're fully recovered before you begin again. That's just a piece of advice that I would, if you feel by Thursday you're not, Thursday evening you're not feeling, you're feeling, you're not feeling good and you don't think a good night's sleep is going to fix the problem, then just wait, take another day of recovery and just adjust the program accordingly. Uh, bent, bent forward cable crossovers again if you don't know what that is I'll put the video in the tutorial uh, concentrated dumbbell rows uh, concentrated curls are probably is the science proves the most effective um, bicep exercise and it's it's really a great exercise for isolating um, the bicep it's my favorite as well as the science prov proving it to be a very good exercise okie doke so next one week three top heavy set on squat is four sets two top heavy set on the bench is 85% three sets of one and then you've got the one arm dumbbell rows and a decline reverse crunch pretty straightforward that day um, Wednesday we're, de we're doing the bench and the deadlift top heavy set on the bench is 80% for four sets of two and the top heavy set for the deadlift is 75% for five sets of two so we're focusing on sets of two on this day and then we've got the peg deck flies, the reverse hypers. Again, if you don't have access to a reverse hyper, just do the new usual 45 degree extension, back extension. Uh, and then Friday, pretty straightforward. Again, we're working up to a top heavy set of 75% for three sets of two for both the squat and the bench, but you're gonna do an extra set for the bench four sets of two instead of three sets of two. 
and then some weighted cable crunches a great abdominal exercise a core exercise it's used a lot in bodybuilding but i rarely if ever have seen a powerlifter use it in a strength program which surprises me because it's, it's fantastic for isolating the ab, ab, abdominal muscles building core strength and you've got that ability to load up the stack load up the weight and put more intensity into the the exercise and get a little bit extra out of it i'm a big fan of this exercise when executed properly that's the other thing about this why you need to watch the tutorial video if you're not aware of what this is most people i see in the gym are not doing it correct so if you do it properly you get a lot out of it if you do it wrong yikes you're not going to get anything out of it so the final week of the program week four day one bench and deadlift nothing too intense here because we're, this this is the week that we're prep working up to trying to either do a comp or a gym pr deadlift 70 percent three sets to two. Uh, wednesday you squat up to 65 percent three sets to two bench three sets to 70 percent there's very much like a deload week here you haven't got many accessory exercises you're not doing a lot of volume a lot of intensity it's deliberately an easier week so if you're doing a comp you take day four off day five day six and day seven and then effectively day eight in this instance would be your competition day or if you're not doing a competition it'll be a pr in the gym day and uh if you want to know how to do um chase prs in the gym i'll put a tutorial video in there um, but in theory you would approach it as the same way as you're doing a competition for a beginner you tell you you do your warm-up sets as you would at a competition when you're in the back room you warm up to to close to your maxes your 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 max so you do maybe a set of 50 60 70 for for one to two reps very low reps and then 90 and then maybe jump to 100 and then try and increase the weight by a sensible amount maybe five to ten pounds uh, per set for for the bench if you're a beginner and maybe a little bit more for the deadlift but uh, i will actually make a video about that i don't want to go into detail on this video because it will drag it out a little bit um, but i will put a tutorial video from another youtube channel on how you do that so anyway that's the program i hope you enjoy it i hope you uh, get a lot out of it um, if you have any questions you can comment uh, on the in the youtube comments um, and I'll be setting up a new Instagram account just for the powerlifting. Um, so you can always add me on there, follow me on there, and then message me. So thanks for watching this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you like it. You can buy it from my website for 99 for under a dollar, which is pretty, pretty generous considering some of the outrageous prices people charge online nowadays for programs that really are not very good. Um, and please do share it with other people if you have any friends who want a program you think this would be good for them just pass it on to them send them the youtube link and then they can decide where they like it so thanks for watching have a fantastic day